Hi, I'm Luke McNeil. I'm a creative professional from Douglas, Massachusetts. And uh, I've been using Adobe Photoshop for a few years now. And like everybody else, I got really excited when I learned that Photoshop was going to come to the iPad. Also, like everybody else, I was very disappointed when I installed Photoshop and learned that all the tools that I expected to be there weren't available yet. But Adobe has been adding functionality to Photoshop on the iPad over time. And today we get the addition of curves. So if you're not familiar with curves, I'm going to go over what they are and how we can use them in Adobe Photoshop. And if you don't use Photoshop, that's OK, because curves are the same across a whole suite of creative tools. So it's a, it's a great skill to, to learn no matter what you're using right after this. Okay, here we are over on my iPad. Let's open up Photoshop here, and uh, you'll see that I've already loaded an image. This is an image that we took on a trip to the Southwest. It's pretty cool. Let's work on it. So what we're gonna uh, go over today is curves in Adobe Photoshop on the iPad, but there's a couple things I'm gonna have to show you first. So let's look at the right side of the interface here. Under the question mark, we have our layers uh, panel here that opens up these little thumbnails of the layers. And then underneath that, we have a layers list, which gives us the name of the layer and some more information. <clears throat> so these are uh, two controls to open up the layers panels. Then under that, we have a settings panel that allows us to adjust the opacity of the layer and some other settings. We're not going to worry about that too much right now. Underneath these three icons, we have the new layer button. This button allows us to create a brand new layer that we can work on. And if we hold it down, it gives us some other options. So let's just go through them. If I create a new layer, you know, I'll open up my layer list here and I'll hit this button and create a new layer. Great. Now I have a new layer that I can draw upon and that's going to protect my original work. Fantastic. If I want to delete this layer now, I can hit this little three dot more menu. And then down here we can go to rename layer or I could uh, delete it or lock it or copy it or whatever. So that's cool. That's how the basic layer system works. Now, if we hold this down and take a look at adjustment layers, we get a suite of different options here. Now we have a brightness and a contrast adjustment that allows us to adjust the brightness and contrast. Black and white gives us some control over the tone of a black and white image. Uh, color balance lets us adjust the balance of different colors. We have curves here. Uh, exposure. Exposure is going to let us turn up or turn down the ex entire exposure across the board of our image. Hue and saturation gives us more control over color. Then we have levels that gives us more control over lights and darks and vibrance, which is another color control. But let's take a look at curves because that's what we're talking about today. So let's uh, let's hit curves and observe what happens when I select the new curves adjustment layer. It creates a new layer up here for me and calls it curves one. And we'll see that we have this little curves icon and then a little white box. This little white box is called a layer mask. And we're going to come back to that at the end. You also see that under the layers panel, now that our properties are open, right? That's this little settings panel here. This opens up by default and we get some curves controls here. Now by default, we're set to points, which is going to allow us to put points along this line and adjust them. And I'll show you that right now. So you can see we have this graphical representation here. It's called a histogram of all the information in our image. This little uh, peak here, this guy right here, is showing us the, the darks in the image. So that's uh, a representation of these mountains. And then you can see a spike over on the right hand of the uh, histogram that's showing us the cloud and all the brights of the image. So we want to make some adjustments to this, and we can use this line to do it. So like you saw, we can just put a point here and drag the overall uh, image to the darker end or the lighter end or whatever. If we just want to adjust a little bit of the image, then we can add multiple points and adjust this curve. Right? So we can make the darks a little bit darker, and then we're going to make the lights a little bit lighter. And what you see is a pretty subtle um, a curve here. This is referred to commonly as an S-curve. And it's so common that if we go back to our adjustment layer, you'll see that's actually the icon in most places for curves is this little S-curve. So it's, um, you'll see that a lot. Great, so this allows us to adjust just parts of our image. So I'm going to make the darks a little bit darker because I like that how when I do that, it makes the colors pop a little bit more. 
great. Cool. And then we just brightened up the sky just a touch. And cool. And now we can touch this little eyeball up here in the layers panel to turn this whole layer on and off. And we can see the change in the sky and in the foreground here. So very cool. That's basically how they work. If we want to get rid of one of these points, we can click on it. So it gets big like that, selected, and touch this little delete trash can. If we want to delete all the points, then we can just hit reset, and it will reset the whole thing to normal. In the curves property, we also have the option to draw here. So if we click on draw, now it takes the little points away on our line, and we can actually find, surgically draw the curve that we want. So if I want to just affect this little peak here, I can just affect that little peak, and that's very that's a very precise way to do this, and it's it's pretty nice. Um, I think this is I, I never used this before Photoshop on the iPad, so it's pretty cool, and I'm excited to get some more use out of it. It's uh, I dig it. Um, so you can draw, or you can use points. You could draw and then convert to points and adjust the points. That's pretty neat. We could just delete this one, say that was a mistake, and that was a mistake. So that's pretty powerful, and now. Under this, let's just reset this, and I'm going to go back to my standard S-curve here. Just pull this down a bit, pop that a bit. Mm -mm. Pull it and pop it, pull it and pop it. Now, under these, um, under the points and draw buttons, we have some options for the color channels, which is interesting. This gives us the avail the, the option to, um, to color grade our image a little bit. And color grading is the, the intentional placement of colors um, inside an image to either to match a feel or a mood of something. You hear about it in movies. I mean, any any movie that you see is color graded. There are people that do this. Um, that's their entire profession, is just putting color in the shadows and the highlights of films. So color grading is very important. This allows us to do it. So let's pick on the red channel here. And you'll see we have our same line here to make our curves adjustments. But the top end of this line is red and the bottom end is um, cyan. So if you if you look at the colors, you'll notice that they're red, green, and blue, RGB. And the opposite of RGB colors are the CMY colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. Right, so that's represented here too. They shade it in a little bit so you can tell. And the way this works is, let's say I wanted to add a little bit of red into the shadows of the image. I can just put a point here and I can drag this up and I can add some red into the shadows. And you'll notice that this is a pretty wide curve. It's also adding some red into the sky and to areas I don't want. So I can add another point here and just kind of pull that back a little bit. And now this is only affecting these areas here in the mountains and in, and in the grass. So I'll add a little bit of red. That's pretty cool. Now, now, if I were to pull that the other way, if I pull it down, it's actually, it looks like it's adding um, cyan because cyan's the opposite color. If we're removing red, we're adding cyan. So that's what's happening here. Push it up, we add red, we pull it down, it looks more cyan. And so I like this push up a little red and then let's see what happens if we do this to the sky? If we pull it down, we get a little more cyan in the sky, which I kind of like. Maybe we, maybe I'll leave it that way. So now I can control these color channels independently of the lights and the darks. So that was red. Let's take a look at green. And the opposite color of green is going to be this magenta, purple color. Let's see what happens if I add some magenta. I say add, but I'm really subtracting green. I'm subtracting green and adding magenta to the shadows, to the darks in the image. And you'll see that the mountains and stuff get a kind of purpley tone. If I push it up, then everything turns this fake alien Kool-Aid green, which is disgusting. So we're not going to do that. That's a bad idea. But I can pull it a little bit to the magenta, and that looks cool. And now let's see what happens if I do the same to the sky. Putting green in the sky looks weird. It makes it turquoise. We don't like that. But putting magenta in the sky is kind of cool, so I'm going to do that. So what happened here is I pulled both ends of this down, and we put a little bit of magenta into the shadows and into the highlights. And now we have blue, which will probably be fun because there's a lot of blue in this image. Um, so it'll be dramatic, I would guess. And let's see what we can do. Let's pull down the blue in the shadows because a lot of the shadow information is like these mountains in the back here and some of this foreground. Let's see what happens if we pull down the blue in the shadows. 
Like, that looks better to me. That looks more, re- I don't know, realistic. It makes this foreground look a little bit more contrasty and colorful, and I like that more. So I'm going to pull the blues down a little bit in the shadows. Now, in the highlights, in the in the sky, we might want to add some more blue because we want the blue to be very apparent. We want a nice blue sky. So I add a, some more blue. And I'm seeing that a lot in these mountains, too, in the back, which is all right. I don't know if I love it so much. Let's see the difference, the before and after. So let's take a look up here at the layers layer, right, my curves layer here, and we will turn it off by clicking on this little eyeball. So let's just turn it off. That's the before, that's our original image. And now after we've applied curves and adjusted all these channels individually, this is what we get. It's a pretty dramatic difference because we've color graded the image using these curves. It's pretty neat, right? You also notice that now that we've adjusted all these channels individually, it's easier to see if I go back to the, the grayscale one, <coughs> that we, we can see the representation of all the little colored lines here, too. So in each channel, you can see you, the adjustments that you made to the other channels, which is a nice touch. Now, I promised we would get back to the layer masks. And if you're not familiar with layer masks, they can be a little bit confusing. But let's try and, let's try and uh, simplify it a little bit. So a layer mask sits on top of a layer, and it allows you to show or hide um, the layer beneath it. Right now, and by default, when we created this layer, we got this white mask. And white always reveals everything underneath. If we want to hide the, the layer underneath this mask, all we have to do is paint black over it. So what I usually do when I'm working with curves is I'll usually take the, uh, the white mask that's created by default and make it all black. So I just cover up my effect completely so you can't even see it. And then I paint on the image with white the areas that I want to reveal. So I'm going to show you how that works. Let's just grab the brush tool over here. So I'm going to use my thumb, and I'm going to click on the brush tool. And I'm going to hold my thumb down, and let's select a... I'm going to grab the soft round, pressure, opacity, and flow. So that's going to give me pressure sensitivity with my Apple Pencil here. And uh, I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is set to black. And then over here in the brush options, I'm going to make a really big brush. And up here in the layers uh, panel, <clears throat> I'm going to select the curves layer. And then we want to make sure that this white square has the little blue border around it. Because that means our layer mask is selected. And now I'm just going to paint in here. I'm just filling it in with the paint. Blah, blah, blah. Let's make sure that my... I'm going to make this hard like that. So I'm taking the, the hardness control. It's a really soft brush I picked, and I'm making it very hard. So now I'm just painting over, making it all black. Groovy. Groovy, 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 groovy. So now our white, um, our white mask here is completely black. Now I can switch my color, right? I want the black to be white. And you'll see, as I paint white, let's make my brush a little bit smaller. So I have some control. Now where I paint white on this black mask, that's where our curve is going to be showing. Because right now it's hidden. Right? I can turn this layer on and off, and you don't see any change. Because this mask is covering up our changes completely. So I'm going to make sure that the eyeball is on. So this layer really is visible. It's just covered up by this black mask. And then I'm going to make sure that my color is white. And now I'm going to paint this just in the mountain areas. And you can see that the curves that we created still are applying to the whole image, but we've got it hidden by that mask. And now I'm just revealing the bits that I want to reveal. So you can see how this is helpful in landscapes, right? I'm affecting only the mountains and not the sky or the foreground at all. But this is also super handy if you're doing portrait retouching or, uh, or really any type of photography. So. This is Curves in Adobe Photoshop, and this is how we use the layer mask. See the area that I painted has now turned white, because we painted it white, and we've revealed this layer on only the mountains. So if I turn it off, bam, now you can see what we've done. We haven't touched the sky or the foreground at all, and we've added the color into the mountains. And now you might want to go in here and adjust it, because you know we can play with the colors 
and we're only affecting the mountains. It's pretty cool and it's pretty powerful. And I suggest that you come in here. Oh, we're getting crazy with the curves, crazy with the cheese whiz. Come in here and play around and use it on your own images. Thanks for uh, checking out my channel. If you like the type of stuff I'm doing, then you can subscribe below and um, drop me a note in the comments. Have a good day.